All right, hello, and welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we're going to be playing In Stone, where a sculptor is confined in a monastery um, asylum. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this. This is going to be different. Uh, I believe it's kind of like a puzzle game. I'm not quite sure. So, if you enjoy this kind of thing, give it a like. If you don't, say it in comments. And make sure you subscribe, because so, we're always bringing new stuff. Enjoy. of the stone wall cannot contain my resentment and hatred. They will regret it. The crooks who stole my Goron statue. Those hypocrites stealing that are mine. Even my family. All I believe in is you. Don't worry about the rumors. I wish I could talk to you in person instead of writing to you. Okay. Very simple so far. So there's like little magnifying glass. Not small to use on the door. Yeah, how do I use it though? I was not expecting any of this so far. Who imagination should remain in imagination? Soft things. A box. Okay. There's a code lock on it. I think I've just used, seen this box before. to be like quiet some of this down because that hurt why is any of this normal what did that say what a friendly looking door do i still have everything I lost it all, okay. <gasps> A newcomer, what's your name? So it's friendly, better to be vigilant. I have to follow that now. Let me turn this down. What, what kind of name is that? No, the name's Claude, but I have to go. 
never seen a Claude looking like you. I'm Barbette. Let me introduce you to the neighbors this way. you get lost. Ah. Hi, Barbette. A crow has built its nest under my window. Come and have a look anytime. I'm sure my late husband was all, would also be delighted whenever he would see bird's nest. He'd always tell me to come and see the nest. That's sweet. He must have liked birds. He did indeed. He would be in such a good mood that he'd be forget to beat me. This is Claude. She's a newcomer living at the end of the hallway. Room at the end? Is Abigail okay? There are two beds in the room. She's still alive, right? I talked about the other person lying in her bed in your room. She mumbled something I couldn't understand. Abigail is always like that. She always talks about faith, but I don't understand half of them. She's a kind woman. It's pitiful for a young to suddenly get sick. Claude, this is a welcome gift for me. Card. Do you want to play cards with me? If you don't want to play, just pretend you didn't hear her. I think she just heard us. Barbette, you don't need to follow? Huh? What? You okay, Cecile? Nice drawing, though. It's on the ground. I told you a dozen times this is ancient mystical sorcery that... Oh, that's right. Sorry. Did that chubby cat return? Roundtail, I think that was his name. Cecile's cat has gone missing. It's gone near colder. I wonder if it's still alive. Hey, you. Me? They'll never get out of this place alive. Claude is new here. You want to say hi? Yeah, she's not in the mood. You don't say. So I should walk through it too? <laughs> That's Delilah. Lovely to meet you. She's been doing that every day ever since Isabel died. I'll show you the other places when you get back from Dr. Sokka. You will be able to adapt quickly. Thanks, but you don't have to. Why? I'm totally okay. I won't be here long. Like a macaroon. Oops, the box is empty. <laughs> You've been thinking about it for too long. <laughs> this is the Trumpelace at home, and I'm the psychiatrist here. Someone left you in our care. You'll be staying here until your symptoms are gone. Calm down. You'll be able to work here. We don't usually allow this, but your guardian strongly requested it. I hear that you are a talented sculpture maker. I've inquired about the value of your work, and I was frankly surprised. Please remember, this is a special privilege we're giving you. We know why you're here. Someone claimed that you smashed up all their marble statues with a mallet. Did I break the statue? I knew it someone was spying on me. It looks like the neighbors who were just shocked and nervous came to check on you. The neighbors harassed me, stole my art, and blocked my patrons. Interesting. 
stated that the statue moved, talked to you, and attacked you. I'm certain of it. You don't know what I saw. Okay, that's important. Tell me exactly what you saw. One of my jobs is to help patients determine whether that they saw was a hallucination or not. Stop this. I am not a patient. I know what I saw. Are you drunk at the moment? There's testimony claiming that you were always drunk and the bottles of wine litter your studio. This is all I can say to a quack like you. How much did you pay for locking me up here? Unfortunately, it's not that much. Do you know what the most important thing is when dealing with patients like you? It's helping the patient develop self-awareness. You consider yourself an under, uh, underappreciated artist, don't you? I mean, you must have had a fair amount of achievements, too. But that can be toxic when you give significance to trivial accomplishments. You start to have false expectations. That's how delusions arise. When someone yearns for something, they are ready to believe even a fraction of the truth. Fraction of the truth. You complain about poverty and the cold, but you still indulge in your delusion. A delusion of receiving proper recognition after enduring all this. Unfortunately, you are an alcoholic. That's all. That discrepancy is eating up your mind. This is not uncommon. I'm not saying that you are lying, but my diagnosis isn't a lie either. In your current state, believing everything you hear and see can create more chaos for you. Don't blindly believe everything you see or hear. It will only make your symptoms worse. You will be on a regimen of therapy and medication going forward. Don't be scared. All things in nature can be either poisonous or medicinal. Did you know that wine is also medicine? It relaxes your body and makes you feel drowsy. Also, it changes your mood. You take it for a long time and it may change you deeper inside, and that's why you need my help. Rest assured, you're in a good hand. Is someone looking for me on the outside? Is there a letter for me? There's been no letter addressed to you. Wait, what's that sound? Should I tell him I can hear that singing? Is he testing me? Who's singing? Sounds like someone is singing. It's coming from the window. Please stay seated for a moment. Thirty-nine seventy-eight. I suggest you use this place fast. Of course, there is a more efficient way, though. It's not an empty threat. He's gonna regret this. Is there any way left to feel this sympathy? If you really want to help me, please send me back to my studio. I look forward to a more cooperative attitude in the next consultation. That's it for today. Please check the small room across from this office. It's not much, but we prepared you a workroom. What is happening? Oh, I was waiting to get to the office to read it, but this must be the one he sent. Take your word for it. Did you just laugh? Go away, I need to be alone. The letters are gone. That's a map. 
This is the card, okay. The mallet is missing. I don't plan on working in this prison. Mm -hmm. Are you a new patient here? I'm a postulant? Postulant? You share a room with Abigail, right? The one who's lying on the bed in your room? She have dark hair? I do. Find her very peculiar. Perhaps everyone close to death is like that, though. She's nothing but skin and bones, yet her eyes gleam strangely as if she's waiting for something. I've never seen a dying person before, have you? Well, now that we're here, we'll probably get used to it. Can you come to the pantry and get some porridge for Abigail? She hasn't eaten much these days. Mm. Hmm. Spilt honey. Okay. Again, you know the punishment for theft, don't you? No, I swear on Jesus and Mary. Please don't lock me up. I didn't lie to your sins, are we? Let's help you a new patient, I swear. Ah, there you are. <clears throat> are you missing any items? Stone? Your letter. A letter addressed to me. Seems we have another one here who requires pentalance. I'm gonna assume that was the wrong answer. Yeah, that was the wrong answer. Okay. You stole it again. Yeah. I'm fine. The darkness will bring you to your senses. Yeah. I don't know why I'm kind of scared of Abigail, especially when I handed this food. Marie's soul too. So wait, who's Marie? You, how do you know her? 
Oh, I asked you. She's my friend. Did you do the sign of the cross before you entered the room? It's very important. Did you use your hands a lot at work? Do you use your hands? When did you see my hand? Your hands seem hardened from work. My hands used to be like yours. I worked at a clock factory. You know what radium is, don't you? That mysterious substance emits a pale blue light in the dark. My job was to paint radium on clock faces. I would dip a small brush into paint and made the tip of the brush pointy with my tongue. Then I would paint with precision and speed. I love that job. It's the best job a woman could ever ask for. I can't do it anymore with my hands in this condition. I can barely hold a spoon properly now. I have a cough. It's fine now, but once it starts, it continues like it's going to die. My jaw felt like it's burning. It started a few years after working and got worse after I came here. Have you seen her? I'm concerned because I haven't seen her for days. What does she look like? There are spots around her eyes like a pair of glasses. On her tail as well. Her fur is very soft and she usually walks on four legs. I haven't left my bed for days, but I played with her through the window. I reflect light on the ground with the mirror. She follows it, and she really likes digging. I haven't seen a dog here. Mm. Now, ominous, the spoon is facing hell. <laughs> Dear Lord, the only thing left to happen is for a curse to take effect. It's the worst omen there is. Death is definitely coming for me soon. I guess that nun wants to kill you then. No, I can't die at the hands of a nun. I'd rather be killed by a pagan. I'd die a martyr, a guaranteed ticket to heaven. Have you been baptized? If my christening counts, I guess so. That's too bad. Have you heard of dog heaven? I'm only talking about baptized dogs, of course. <laughs> Atheists and pagan dogs would go to hell, or just cease to exist. A priest in my hometown said that animals have no soul. I'm sorry, I forget. So they would cease to exist from this earth once they died. In other words, death is an eternal parting but for dogs it made a payment the priest would bless them with holy water to be precise people paid for it they would hold their dogs tight while the priest would spray holy water on their foreheads it's pretty much the same as baptizing in my opinion it's at least equal to a christening i suppose so logically it's a possibility that somewhere up there there's a heaven for dogs <coughs> if not what's the meaning of all this am i right All I have left in this world is my body that's slowly dying. <clears throat> they say that there's no pain or disease where I'm headed after I'm releasing from enduring all this suffering. What do you think of that? You'll be able to paint as much as you like. Your hands will be as skillful as they were back in your prime. Thank you, but without Marie, I'd still feel empty even if I could paint all the clocks in heaven. Did you know radium glows for more than a thousand years? So the clocks I painted will still blow blue at night even a thousand years from now. Dying doesn't seem as frightening when thinking of things like this. This is what Marie looks like. Once you find her for me, I'll tell you something important. Like things that are hidden within this hospital. If you walk out the back door of the pantry, you'll see the backyard. Go there and call her name. the echo that was awesome jar
thought about it. Mm, that's funny. Dark, I don't think she's in here. There's a brick. Carving mallet's an odd spot. <laughs> the hand of the person Mary said, she smells like butter. I thought I picked up the bucket. in the backyard. Good gracious, it's empty. This animal is larger than a rat. A rat trap won't do. We need something else. Oh, there's something peculiar about the Virgin Mary statue in the backyard. What about it? I'm trying to make a wish on the hand of benediction. You shouldn't touch it. Aren't you trying to touch it and make a wish? It's famous for that. Many people make pilgrimages here just to touch her hand. They come a long way to this remote cliffside. That's why her fingers are so worn and polished. Abbey wasn't always this quiet, at least not until 300 years ago. You don't know? You really are f you really are from the city. The Huguenots and the Pro Protestants were severely prosecuted at the time. Persecuted. The residents here were mostly Catholic, just like they are now. They started with extremists from elsewhere. You know this, right? Their doctrine forbids idol worship. They claim that is Terry to carve the image of God. Beautiful chapels that were built hundreds of years ago were attacked. This abbey was no exception. The Virgin Mary statue in the backyard was cracked by a stone thrown by a Huguenot who snuck in. If you look carefully, you'll see the crack on the right arm. What's wrong? In the old days, somewhere in the stone wall, there was a small passage for pilgrims who arrived after the sun went down, perhaps the head and none knows. Anyway, the Catholic presidents, residents started to feel threatened, and so began the lynchings of all sizes. First, the Huguenot extremists, extremists were captured and hung in the square. Once united, this fury drew a life of its own. This was only the beginning. On the dawn of St. Barth Bartholomew, Bartholomew's day, the massacre began at the ringing of Abbey Bells. The slaughterers tied white linen around their arms as marks of a good Catholics to recognize each other. In two days, more than a thousand people lost their lives, and elderly and children were no exception. The Huguenots, who barely survived, came all the way here looking for shelter. They went to the backyard and gra grasped the Virgin Mary statue's hand. They prayed for one last act of mercy to the Virgin Mary statue that supposedly grants wishes and to the Catholics who worship the Virgin Mary. But the pursuers were ruthless. They dragged them to the chapel where they cut down every single one of them and burned their bodies. You do know what that means, don't you? We believe in the eternity of existence, both the body and soul. After death, the soul goes to heaven, while the body waits for the end of days with the hope of resurrection. The he did not share these beliefs as well. That's why burning their bodies was crueler than simply killing them. Since then, the number of people making pilgrimages there, here has gradually decreased. The bell has fallen silent. It has become a quiet and desolate abbey. It's stupid and sad. You're not wrong. It's just a block of stone. But considering what happened, it was actually more than that. When the stone cracked, the statue's right arm, people would have taken it as an attack on the actual Virgin Mary herself. They may have never seen the Virgin Mary with their own eyes, but they must have offered prayers 
and cherish the tangible Virgin Mary statue. They would touch the stone hand and imagine her warmth while making heartfelt wishes, as if receiving God's comfort. Oh, by the way, what were you trying to say? You were asking about the hand of the Virgin Mary? It's nothing. I'll get going. I just remember that I have something to do. For the butter thief? No, you're looking for the dog, aren't you, Claude? You really believe that fat rat? Hmm. If you can't believe what you see, why do you make stone figures at all? You smash countless pieces of yours after pouring your soul into making them, all because of your ego. You were trying to hide your pitiful efforts from others. You always want to be this young genius that bursts into the art field. <laughs> You'd rather be a drunkard who wastes away your talent instead of becoming a boring, hard-working sculptor. You might be able to fool others, but not me. I see right through you. You want to see him again, yes? Then make a deal with me. I don't need it. He's going to come find me soon. Claude, no one will come to find you. I admit that doubts and insecurities are eating you from the inside out. That's an ugly feeling. Beautiful and simple people are loved. Would he have looked at you like this if it wasn't for your talent? He said, there's no one who will come for you. Do this again. Yeah, I feel like I just messed up. Try working. chisel. I don't know what that tooth chisel looks like. Maybe it is. I mean, this kind of looks like a tooth chisel. What's this? I click that. So I think I'm supposed to use this. There we go, okay. Are we gonna make the dog? That's kinda cool. It's 
really cool. Very interesting. So I wonder if I bring this dog to her, was she gonna know better? I'm gonna try it. I think that's the premise of like what I'm supposed to do. So how do I do that? Paint? the porridge. Maybe there's paint somewhere? Can I do that? Okay, I was wondering if it would allow me. 